Jason Les has more than $1.5 million in live tournament poker earnings and is a respected online high stakes player. Les usually plays poker to earn a living, which is a lot of pressure in its own right, but the past two years he's had even more weight on his shoulders while playing. Why the added stress? Because Les was representing all of humanity in a contest with a poker playing, artificially intelligent bot designed by a team of computer scientists from Carnegie Mellon University. In 2016, Les and a few other players came out on top against a bot known as Claudico. In 2017, the Brains vs. AI challenge swung in favor of the machines, with the improved Liberatus bot winning 17,000 big blinds from a team of four heads-up poker specialists that included Les. CarPlayer TV caught up with Les, who was deep in a tournament at the 2017 World Series of Poker, to discuss the progress that the CMU team made from year to year, and what he thinks it means for poker for there to be such a strong heads-up, no-limit hold'em playing bot. Uh, yeah, so the progress Carnegie Mellon made from Claudico to Labratus was really impressive. Uh, we did win, you know, pretty decisively the first time around, and the second time we lost very decisively. And, uh, you know, going into the second challenge, we didn't know exactly what to expect. Uh, it, it, as poker players, you know, we're not aware of the progression in AI that's going on. But uh, we had to assume that if they were going to do another challenge, they felt like they had a pretty good chance. And uh, it, it played way better. Um, you know, Claudico made some like very noticeable mistakes over and over again. Labratus really didn't have these mistakes. It had a couple bugs, maybe some days, but they, they fixed them like that day, you know, it was gone. Um, it it played way tougher than Claudico. I think people who have watched both challenges have seen that the AIs really put a lot of pressure on. A lot of overbets uh, from Claudico, and then we just saw that ramped up Labratus. And it was very often in situations where, you know, you, you never really have a great hand, you have a capped range as we, we would call it. And uh, you're just constantly, you know, just sweating hands in your uh, face in your hands trying to figure out what to do. So uh, I think it I think it was pretty incredible what they were able to do. Now what that what that means for poker? Well, thankfully uh, for most poker players Heads Up is a very small portion of poker that's played. It's really only played on the internet, and even then it's a very small portion of internet poker. So I think going forward, people who are playing Heads Up maybe do have to be a little bit cautious about who they are playing. Uh, the current version of Labratus, uh, with the uh, infrastructure they had to run it, cost millions of dollars, okay? So no one's gonna do that right now on the internet. But uh, as time goes on, Obviously, people know competing power gets cheaper and better. So it's going to be the the ball's really in the site's court to you know stay on top of uh, people that could be using computer systems and also you know come up with new strategies for dealing with it. Uh, however, you know there this AI doesn't work for cash games. It doesn't work for tournaments. I think a lot of people might have the wrong idea. They think that, well, this thing can play heads up. We can just throw it in anything. It doesn't work like that. Uh, they're not really there in full ring yet. I'm sure there's people out there that are working on that. I'm sure there's people out there that, you know, are maybe making progress. Uh, Carnegie and Malone specifically, I don't believe they have any interest to do any more in poker. Poker is really just, for them, was just like, the benchmark to showing that they had game solving technology and it's not like they're just trying on a mission to solve everything in poker it's not you know they're not a poker <laughs> it's not their goal but uh you know people out there will be so you know it's something to be aware of and it's something that i hope the sites i know the sites are probably taking very seriously because you know it's their whole business so we'll see heads up no limit was targeted as a great challenge for ai because of the complexity of the game which involves incomplete information. CMU and other computer science programs who are working on solving this game aren't necessarily doing so with the hopes of creating and selling a training tool. But with that being said, we asked Les if he thinks playing against a bot like Libratus would be a good way to work on improving your heads up game. I think this AI can be a really great learning tool. Uh, the way it did play is very, what made it so good is it had such a complex strategy. It's not something humans can just imitate, you know? You look at every specific combination of hand 
and it's playing that like a different way, you know, different frequencies at the time. And that allows it to be like extremely balanced. You know, that's what Labratus means in Latin, balanced. So um, it's not a strategy that's very easy to replicate at all. Now, I can Im imagine there is a way to simplify it and there is a way that you can use that simplification to kind of help people with their game uh, going forward. So I would not be surprised if like we saw something like that one day. Now, is it good? Well, you know, yeah, everyone wants to get better at poker. Here's a tool to do it. But when everyone's, if everyone's using that tool, then it just makes everything a lot harder. So, uh, I, but I mean, we've seen that over time with poker, you know, there used to be a time when there weren't a plethora of books available. There used to be a time when there wasn't uh, trackers and training sites like Upswing Poker to help you. Like, so, uh, you know, I think it might be just be the reality of poker in this age that more and more tools come out that make the games harder and harder. Speaking of the topic of poker training and pros sharing their strategic approach, many have justified giving away their secrets by saying that it's unlikely that amateurs would be able to implement their strategies as effectively as they do. We asked Les if he thinks this might be even more true of Liberatus, and that you might be able to learn from its approach, but it would be hard for humans to replicate. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good point. It, it is. It would be very difficult for humans to you know, adopt the strategy and try to learn from it. I, I'm not 100% sure on this figure, but I believe Libratus' game strategy was 150 terabytes of data. Okay, so think about how, how much that is. Anyone who knows computers, like, that's, that's a lot. And the brain's not gonna be able to store that. So I think there would have to be some simplification process done you know, that maybe that weakens the strategy, but still, like, you have to generalize things a bit to maybe people can be able to copy it more closely. Um, it, yeah, it, it's just, it's, it's very complex and, like, tough as it is right now. But I, I think there's some general concepts that people can learn from. Uh, for instance, like we mentioned, the overbetting. You know, a lot of people aren't really overbetting much uh, as the AI does at least. A lot of people look at the pot size as like the most they can bet, you know? It's not, it's just a reference point. You know, it's not pot limit, there's no limit. Bet whatever you want. And I think that kind of stuff we learn from the AI and that opens up people's games. And I think people see uh, like the same hand being played a bunch of different ways. And I think people think about trying to work that in their game as well. Artificial intelligence is going to impact our world in many ways in the years to come. It seems that Jason Laz knows better than most just how impressive these programs can be. Thanks to Jason for sharing his thoughts on the topic, and thank you for watching this video right here on Card Player TV.